Calculus quiz limits through normal lines. We have a quiz here that's going to be previewing, in a way, an upcoming test over the same topics, limits through normal lines. So we'll go over these problems right now. One, well, tell whether f of x is differentiable where x equals 5. Well, when we look for differentiability, we have to look for first continuity. And this is the way that we do this in our class. We have the limit as x approaches our critical number, 5. And we are going to go from the left of f of x is equal to limit as x approaches 5 from the right side of f of x. And sometimes I put a question mark above here because we don't know if they do match up. So, uh, first thing we'll do is take the left side for less than, and that's going to be left, uh, and we can put the just the function in here, x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals the right side, 2x minus 9. So now we can substitute in 5. So on the left side we have 5 squared minus 8 times 5 plus 16. And the right side we have 2 times 5 minus 9. On the right side we're going to have 10 minus 9 or 1. On the left side we're going to have 5 squared minus, so we'll have 25 minus 5 times 8 minus 40 plus 16. So we have 1 is equal to 1. So we have continuity. So now we're going to test for differentiability by putting these equations down, this equation, limit as x approaches 5 from the left side, not of f of x, but of f prime of x equals the limit as x approaches 5 from the right side of f prime of x. And so the left side derivative is going to be 2x minus 8, and the right side is going to be 2. So plugging in 5, we have 2 times 5 minus 8 is equal to 2. We have 2 is equal to 2. So since, and we can summarize, since f of x is continuous at x equals 5 and limit as x approaches 5 of f prime of f x exists f of x is differentiable at x equals 5. Okay, next, differentiate each function below. So we'll go over these one at a time. For a, we have y prime is equal to 12 x cubed minus 2. So that's part A. Part B, we have g of x equals 2 over x minus 3 over 5 fourth root of x. So the first thing I want to do is rewrite this in calculus-friendly form. So we have 2x 
to the negative one power minus three fifths x to the negative one fourth power. Yeah, it's just a just a rewrite. Now, g prime of x is equal to negative two x to the negative two power and then we're going to have minus three-fifths times negative one-fourth and we're going to have x to the negative one-fourth minus one so negative five-fourths and so now we're just going to simplify this out. G prime of x is equal to negative 2 over x squared. And then we have minus, minus, minus times minus is going to be plus. So we have 3 in the numerator over 5 times 4. So we put 3. 20th, because 5 times 4 is 20, and we're going to have the fourth root, there's a little 4 there, of x to the fifth power. So this is going to be our answer to, to problem B. Next, C, we have this uh, y equals 2x times quantity x squared minus 3x to the fifth power. Now we could expand all this fifth power out, and but that's going to take a long time. What I like to do when you have them, these two things is treat them like a product of two functions. So down here below I'm going to put my little work sheet for that. doing this, this is just sort of a graphical organizer, so we have, for u, I'll put 2x, and derivative of 2x is 2, and then we have over here 2x times quantity x squared minus 3x to the fifth power, and what's the derivative of this? I'm just going to work that on the side over to the right. That's going to be, so ddx of x squared minus 3x to the fifth power is going to be equal to 5. We have x squared minus 3x to the fourth power times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x minus 3. So what we're going to have over here is 5 times 2x minus 3 parentheses x squared minus 3x and that's going to be to the fourth power. And just putting this all together what we're going to have is y prime is equal to 2x times this 5, so, so diagonally we're going to have 10x and we're going to have these things right here, 0.2x minus 3 times 20x squared minus 3x to the fourth power plus these multiplied together here, 2 times 2x to the fourth, that'll be 4x is that right? yeah that is right and we're going to have 
x squared minus 3x to the fifth. And yes, we could look for like terms in here and, and common factors and perhaps simplify this out more. But this is actually going to be a sufficient answer for part C. And finally, for D, we have a quotient of two functions. So we're going to say our high, our high function here is going to be 2x plus 4. Our derivative of high is going to be 2. And our low function is going to be x minus 3. And our derivative of our low function is going to be 1. So h prime of x is equal to low, and low being x minus 3, d high, which is 2, minus high, which is 2x plus 4, d low, which is 1. And we're going to have this all over low squared, which is 20x minus 3 squared. And then what we have here is, is I'm just going to continue working below, h prime of x equals 2x minus 6 minus 2x minus 4. all over quantity x minus 3 squared. So h prime of x is going to be equal to negative 10 something is stuck there, yeah negative 10 all over quantity x minus 3 squared. So that's going to be A, B, C, and D. So it's a mix of different levels of derivative technique problems. I'm trying to make sure they're all viewable looks like they are in case they aren't I'm just going to scroll up just a shade there okay so that's all of that that's number two number three find the x values for which the graph of four-thirds x cubed plus nine halves x squared minus five x plus six has a horizontal tangent line what we're going to do is find the first derivative and set that derivative equal to zero so our, our prime of x is equal to 3 times 4 thirds x squared plus 2 times 9 halves x minus 5. And then simplifying out, we have r prime of x is equal to 4 x squared plus 9 x minus 5. And if we set this equal to zero, we shall find the, we could find the x values, and this will say zero is equal to, and we can find the factors we hope. And I want to use something we've done here in the classes. Um, we have AC up here, which is negative five times four, which is negative twenty, and B goes down here. And so what two numbers multiplied together to be negative 20 but added together equal 9? Hmm. What about for, for 9? What 
What about three and six? What about four and five? Yeah, four and five. Well, that's not going to work out, is it? Something's messed up here. That's right. What about two and ten? This four and five looks like it would be it, except we'd have to add together to be nine. Two and ten would add together to be eight. So I don't know, I could have I could have messed this up. We can try to see if, if we have something, if we can use the quadratic formula. We have x is equal to uh, negative b and so we'll say yeah that's right so negative 9 plus or minus square root of 9 squared minus 4 times a times c, which is negative 5, over 2a, which is going to be 2 will be 8. Okay, 2 times 4. So we have x is equal to negative 9 plus or minus, we have 81 plus um, that's going to be 4 times 4 times negative 5 that's going to be, let's see, it's 20, the 80 so we have 81 plus 80, so I have square root of 161 over 8. So these would be our answers here. I think I had intended to make it a little more factorable and so forth, but that's the answer to this one. So two values, here they are, right here using the quadratic formula. And I could have possibly made a mistake here, uh, but the, based on the way I'm seeing this now, that's what it looks like. Four, find each limit as indicated. What is the limit uh, of h of x equals, we have these functions here, a piecewise function. And I hope you can see that the limit depends on approaching from the left and the right. And so there's only going to be a limit if this function, the value of this function at x equals, as x approaches 2 from the left side equals the value of this function as x approaches 2 from the right side. And so we can say the limit as x approaches from the left side of h of x equals the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side of h of x. So we can just plug in. Now on the left side we're going to have, if we plug in 2 we'll get 0 over 0 but if we factor this out on the left side and put x squared minus 4 is going to be x minus 2 times x plus 2. And so these will cancel out. And on the right side, we're going to have 3. I'll put 3x minus 23 fourths. 
and now we can plug in two so we get on the left side one over two plus two on the right side we're going to get three times two minus 23 fourths and on the left side we get one fourth and the right side we get six and six is 24 fourths minus 23 fourths so we get one fourth is equal to one fourth so our answer here is one fourth okay so that's that's that one b the limit is x approach infinity of 5x squared minus 7 over 6 minus 2x squared so answer this one is going to be negative 5 thirds c the limit as x approaches 3 of 7x minus 5 well we're going to plug in first see if that works we're going to have 7 times 3 7 times 3 minus 5 so we get 21 minus 5 is 16 and square root of 16 is 4 on D the limit as x approaches 5 of e squared well e is a constant and so we're going to get for this e squared Euler's number squared and then e we have the limit as x approaches 0 as h approaches 0 of 4 times quantity x plus h cubed over h plus 4x cubed well for this one here we're going to have f of x is equal to negative 4x cubed and so this limit is the definition of derivative and so our answer to this situation is going to be the derivative or the first derivative of this which is going to be negative 12x squared so that's what E is. 5 There it is. Find the average rate of change for f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 5 over the closed interval from negative 2 to 2. Well, average rate of change is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a which is equal to well b is going to be equal to 2 a is equal to negative 2 and so if we plug in values f of 2 is equal to 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 5 so f of 2 is equal to a 4 minus 16 that's negative 12 negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7 and f of negative 2 is equal to negative 2 squared minus 8 times negative 2 plus 5 and so that's going to be 4 plus 16 plus 5 which equals f of negative 2 equals 25 so that's going to be f of a so what we have is f of b that's going to be 2 is negative 7 minus f of a which is 25 over b minus a that's going to be 2 minus negative 2 so that's going to be negative 32 over 4 
which uh, simplifies to negative 8. Okay, that's problem 5. 6, f of x equals 2 over x plus 3. Write the equation of the line tangent to the graph of f of x where x equals 2. Well, what do we need for this? We need to have two things. We have a point and a slope. Well, our point is going to be the coordinate pair, 2, comma, and we plug in 2 for, for this, so we get 2 over 2. If we, if we plug in 2 for x, 2 over 2 is 1, plus 3 is 4. So that's our point. And now for, to find our slope, f of x is equal to 2 x to the negative 1 power plus 3. And we want to find f prime of x, which is equal to negative 2 x to the negative 2 power, which is equal to negative 2 over x squared. And f prime of 2 is equal to negative 2 over 2 squared, which is negative 2 over 4, negative 1 half. So slope, say, m sub t equals negative 1 half. And so our equation or line is going to be y minus y1 equals negative 1 half x minus x1. So that's going to be our answer for problem 6. Problem 7, find the instantaneous rate of change of y equals 4 times the cube root of x where x equals 125. Well, what we have is this is equivalent to y equals 4 times x to the 1 third power And to find instantaneous rate of change, that's the first derivative of that point. So y prime is equal to one third times four x to the negative two thirds power. And that's going to be y prime is equal to four over three cube root of x squared. And now we plug in 125. y prime is equal to 4 over 3 cube root of 125 squared so we have 4 over 3. What we have is 125 squared is going to be a really large number. But if we can take the cube root first, well, the cube root of 125 is 5. So that's going to be 5 squared. So 5 replaces cube root of 125. So what that's going to give us is 4 over 3 times 25, or 75. So that's going to be our instantaneous rate of change, where x equals 125. Next, 8. Write the equation of line normal to y equals 2 over x cubed plus 3, where x equals 1. Well, again, we need to have two things here. We need to have a point. And the point is going to be 1, comma. We're going to plug in here. If we plug in 1 for x, 2 over 1 cubed, well, that's going to be 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. And next, our slope. And that's going to be m sub n for the slope of the normal line. Well, to do this, we're going to find our first derivative here. So y is equal to 2x cubed plus 3. 
So y prime of, is equal to 6. Well, that's going to be to the negative third power. So uh, I take that back. So I kind of wrote that wrong here. What we're going to have is 2 times negative 3, or negative 6, x to the negative fourth power, and the derivative of 3 is 0. So we're going to get negative 6 over x to the fourth power. So y, y of prime of 1 is going to be negative 6 over 1 to the fourth power, which equals negative 6. So that's going to be equal to m sub t, and m sub n is going to be our negative reciprocal. So we're going to get 1 sixth. So m sub n is 1 sixth. So now our equation is going to be y minus 5 equals 1 sixth x minus 1. So this is going to be our equation for our normal line. Okay, and finally we have 9, which is the integral from 0 to 5 of x dx. So what we can do for this is, we haven't gone over integral calculus yet, we'll soon get there. So we have the, the equation y equals x. So that's going to be this right here, y is equal to x. And we're going from 0 to 5. So we have, we have an isosceles triangle with a base of 5, a height of 5. So the area under this curve, we call it, is going to be base times height divided by 2. So 25 halves. So that's all that's on this review or preview, whatever we want to call it. I hope this has been helpful to you. Good luck, and as always, thanks for viewing.